Big Brother said it, right? You're not recording it, are you? <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we yeah, go. That's what you're yeah, that's right. Five, four, yeah. three, two, one, and go. Well, that's for under the credits. <laughs> Welcome to Chicago Theater Review, and I'm Frank and Gail, my co-host, and we are at uh, a weird party, actually. <laughs> there is a new play in Chicago, and most people are used to watching a TV show, Hoarders. Well, this really is a copy of that, but done in a weird way, especially with a weird cast. And we decided to bring the weird cast on with us. Um, They're eccentric. Okay, eccentric is the yeah, that's the artistic. Some word. of us. I resent that. For Some of us. Are. No, you resent them. What I want to start off though is introduce the um, is Wendy Kaplan, who is the producer, and uh, Wayne Mao, who is also the director. Hi. Okay. <laughs> that's a good start. I'm Wendy Kaplan. <laughs> My company is Madcap Productions, and I am the producer of Clutter, the true story of the Collier brothers who never threw anything out. How did you come up on this? Actually, through Andrew, uh, who plays Langley Collier. And as the story goes, uh, Andrew was in a reading of another play by Mark Saltzman um, entitled uh, Mr. Shaw Goes, Goes to Hollywood. Hollywood. And Mark fell in love with Andrew and decided that Andrew would be as an actor. 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 As the script and potentially playing Langley Collier and then he asked Andrew if he might recommend some producers in the Chicagoland area who would like to produce this play and that's how I got involved. That's how you got involved. Now Wayne you're directing this. That's correct. Now you're also director up at the Citadel. Right? I, I'm yeah, managing director of the Citadel Theater in Lake Forest and also um, one of their ensemble directors so every season I, I and who found you? Wendy. I did. Wendy found me. I produced a, a couple of shows up at Citadel that Wayne has directed. And a couple of the actors are from the Citadel also, right? They and have worked who's there. Who's all from the Citadel? No, Citadel. Uh, that's uh, okay. Raise your hands. That's how I knew Wendy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's how I, I knew Michael, but Ed and I have been doing shows together for over 15 years. So okay. scary. Because most people haven't heard of the Citadel. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a very small theater company located in Lake Forest, right? That's correct. So, uh, people have to just drive all the way up there. And Chicago people, you know, they can be, but uh, <laughs> they can't get there by train. <laughs> so, but it's well worth the drive if you go. There's a pretty good theater up there. I'd make the trip up. I would think. Thank you for the plug. for Citadel. So, Wayne, what got you involved with this thing? Uh, well, Wendy had this script, and, you know, she had Andrew as, as an actor all ready to go, and, and she was looking for a second opinion. She looked at me and said, you know, oh my God, I'm putting all this money into this. <laughs> you know, look this over, just, you know, tell me I'm not making a mistake. And so I read the play and I looked at it and said, no, you're not making a mistake at all. It's a wonderful script and you can do this with it. You can do this with it. You can do this with it. And the next thing, you know, I kind of have a job off it. <laughs> but it, I started, the first time I read it was really more just to give advice to my friend as opposed to to make a bid for a project, so it just kind of all escalated. Now this is a Midwest premiere, because yes, it originally was seen in Burbank, right? California had it done. Pasadena. Pasadena did it first. Mm -hmm. And now it's, and now that was, but that was a couple, that was back in what? 2003, four. Yeah, yeah, so it's been a while since this is, so this is the first time in Chicago. Yes, it is. So what made you, what made you decide out of this out of all place? Is it because of what's going on? Well, Mark Saltzman is a seven Emmy Award winning playwright, a former partner of uh, Jim Henson with the Muppets. His writing is just spectacular. And I was very, very flattered to get this opportunity, really. And so I thought that this is such a wonderful play and so timely because of all the hoarding shows on yes. television right now that I thought, what better than to do a play that would, you know, encompass the hoarding. 
Well, I was surprised because, you know, hoarding, yeah, they start out in one show and now it's like four or five days. Exactly, so exactly. The but there are no plays about and hoarders. No plays <laughs> until I first read this. Now, this is based on a true story. Yes, it is. The Collier Brothers in New York in 1919. In fact, Wayne and I went to New York uh, in December and we went to 128th and 5th and there is now a plaque where the Collier Mansion used to be that says, I think it's Collier Park. So they've made it into a little park, but we could actually see where the mansion was back in the day. Now, when, when we got here, they were filming um, their B-roll, and these, these, I, I, just, I was laughing so hard. These guys back here are all in the show. They're all going to introduce themselves, but they seem like they just work so well together and have a great time. Am I... We were I see it correctly. I can't say that. Great actors. Great. 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 We've never actually met before today. <laughs> <laughs> we all have separate dressing rooms. Well, you're yeah. wonderful <laughs> actors. Why don't you guys all introduce yourselves and who you sure. play? And... Uh, I'm Stephen Genovese. Uh, I uh, play a variety of characters uh, in Clutter, uh, all rolled into the name Guy Number One. And you work with a. You work with another. Yes, I'm our artistic advisor for Boho Theater here in the city. I've been working... Which uh, I'm going to tonight. Hooray! Awesome. <laughs> to see cartoons. Talk for Boho. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I've been uh, an actor and director in Chicago for about 25 years. Yeah. And, work. and I am Tim Walsh, as well as Steve. I play a variety of different roles, all rolled up into guy <laughs> number two. And that was my <laughs> first experience with... Yes, exactly. That was a nice pretty book. Uh, my first experience with Mad Cat. Uh, but... Uh, and it is. We're a great ensemble. It's great to work with. And uh, I am Andrew Pond, and I play Langley Collier. And um, really shy. And very, very, very <laughs> introverted. <laughs> um, I've worked with. I actually Why? met Wayne and Wendy a number of years, two years ago, I think. Now three. Uh, three. Oh God. Um, two and a half. Two and a half. Three years ago. Feels um, like yesterday. Wayne directed me in a show called Murder in Green Meadows oh, up nice. at Citadel Theater, and Wendy produced it. That's how I, I met the two of them. And I am also uh, a founding member of the brand new theater company here in Chicago, the Eclectic Theater Company, which oh. will be starting our first season in October of 2012. Yes. Thank you very much. Ding, ding, another one. We can all get a minute. That's right. Absolutely. OK, um, my name is uh, Edward Cufford, and I am not formally associated with any theater company. In fact, I'm doing this uh, between real working jobs. Um, so and I have known Wayne for uh, quite a while. I've done, what is this, my fourth show? Anyway, so a, a number of shows. Feels like yesterday. And uh, my, my mother would probably approve of this because she would probably feel that I was finally doing a part that uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> resembled some part of my own. And the irony, the irony is I hate collecting stuff. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. It's group therapy. It is. <laughs> and I'm Joe Mack, and I'm playing Sergeant Riley Dolan. And I'm really regretful that I don't have anything to plug. Yeah, something out. But I know we've seen you at the Gift Theater. You've seen me at the Gift Theater. Yes. Night Ding. in her stars, playing a game show. Yes. Oh, it's Jack Berry. It was a fun <laughs> role in a wonderful company. And um, met Wendy and Mel. Wendy and Mel. <laughs> <laughs> show before 
And none of them got along as much as this. I, this seems is. like a, just a really tight ensemble. That's so this gives you an idea what this play is going to be like, then, right? We get along so well. We've had so much fun at rehearsals. Usually rehearsals can be tedious. Not this group. <laughs> wait, 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 we're here from noon till 10 p.m. today. Why don't you come back at 10 p.m.? Is there flying? When does the show open? Now? We open on Thursday night, January 19th. Now you've got something what? special going on with it. Oh, you didn't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's next Thursday. January 19th? Wow. Did you think it was fair to be a nose for a minute? We're using cue cards, aren't we? Yeah, we're projecting it on, on the screen. You have two special things going on during these productions, this, this season with this show. You have a psychiatrist coming in called Psych 101. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not at all. I have um, a psychologist okay. who named uh, Dr. Scott Kaplan. He's an Illinois licensed clinical psychologist who just so happens to be my son. Yeah, how do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds familiar. Say, how long have you known him? Many, many years. He's actually looking at this way. He can't be related. <laughs> He's going to be handling talkbacks on alternating Thursday nights for any audience members that would like to stay and discuss the show. You're expecting a lot of orders to come to this. Um, yeah. <laughs> closet hoarders. Closet hoarders. Well, what's been interesting is that everybody who's heard of this show or, or whatever has all sat back and, and said, well, I can associate with that because I either live that way or I know somebody like that. Doesn't ever, so, do, you, do you all, I mean, we, I do. Does everybody know somebody? She knows or, it from my sister. Who is I think we all know yeah. somebody. Oh, yeah. Who, yeah. So, you know. so in that respect, yeah, we do think a lot of people will come to these talkbacks just to either vent about their spouse who they can't get to clean out the den or, or to, to confess their own passion. But it's also, it's also a play about family relationships and caring for your siblings. And there's a lot more going on here than just hoarding. Okay, there's, so there's, a, there's a lot that people might be affected by. I know, and you don't want us to give away anything. No, I things. really don't. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this special little message, don't give away anything before opening the <laughs> Michael Kostroff, who played in The Wire and uh, also Les Mis on the touring company that came through town, he got it in his head uh, back in December that he wanted to do a reading of the play Clutter in New York. Mm -hmm. So he did the reading, he played the role of Homer Collier in the reading, and he has agreed to fly in and do his Auditions 101, which is the psychology of auditioning. Ah. So he will be doing a workshop here on Saturday, February 4th. See how I tied both into you one? You did a very nice day. job of that, but they really are not related. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, so tell us about you guys, how you got prepared for this role. Any of you, you two brothers, you have two brothers. Memorize right? the script. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Said, hey, Wayne, what am I doing in this scene? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, Some of it. All right. I mean, in my life, uh, lines, really. I mean, it's, I mean, it was kind of easy, easier for me because I did know someone at, at one point who was a, 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 a hoarder, and so I kind of understood that. But honestly, it was really about just going into the script and reading it and trying to figure out how the, everything related outside of the hoarding thing because it, there would be clues in the relationship that explained the reasons behind why these two brothers would hold on to things so tightly as opposed to it just being, oh, they just don't like throwing things out. So it was, it was looking into that kind of stuff. Which I think there always is. There's oh, always yeah. that component. Oh, yeah. There's, there's always a psychological you know. component to stuff like this. The, right. the only other thing was um, learn to play the piano. <laughs> <laughs> Since I don't, and in this show I'm supposed to. When are you going to do that, by the way? Um, <laughs> uh, yes. This weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Monday. No. We have Monday, Monday off. We, right? have Monday. <laughs> we have Monday off. So we Monday. Remember, yeah. you yeah. open soon. That's okay. right. That's right. I can pick up Chopin in a night. <laughs> we'll be fine.
Is there anything special you need to tell us? Anything that we should know? Uh, what's coming up soon? What's in the works? Oh, I can't. See. Well, I can talk about one thing. That's oh, okay. Yeah. What is the secret? Why is there a chip in the sky? I always get the scoop first. <laughs> At the end of 2012, I'm going to be producing a one-man comedy theater play entitled Side Effects May Include. It's written by a former Seinfeld writer, Mark Jaffe, whose wife unfortunately had contracted Parkinson's disease. So the play was written in honor of his wife, and it's the funny side, if there is one, of Parkinson's disease. And he has established a subsidiary foundation to the Michael J. Fox Foundation. And the subsidiary is called Shaking with Laughter. And I will be donating 10% of all proceeds to Shaking with Laughter. And we will be doing that in and around the Chicagoland area. That's wonderful. Wayne, anything coming up for you that we should know about? Clutter opening <laughs> January 19th. Yes. You know, everybody come see it. Hi, Mom. <laughs> um, when is it? When is it running till? It runs through uh, March 11th. March 11th. Okay. And there are two websites you can go on. Correct. You can go on the greenhouse. Greenhousetheater.org or MadcapProductions.com, and that's Madcap with a K. Okay. And it'll also be on the website. It'll be us. on our website as well. And um, yeah, you guys, we're just really looking forward to this because if you guys are as much fun up there as you are out here, <laughs> <laughs> this should be a great Even spot. more so. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're, hold, they're holding back. Yeah. You know, you know, he's he's our dignified you know 30% oh. down there. Yeah, yeah. 30%. Yeah. Yeah. He asked me on the way here, he said, what's the difference between clutter and hoarding? And I said, I think that clutter is the old term for hoarders. Like, you know, years ago you heard people just had clutter. You didn't really hear about the word hoarding. Is that, is that right? I mean, now it's so popular. Because well, Mark Salzman tells a wonderful story, um, which he would tell you if he were here. He's the playwright. And he said that the reason why he got involved in, in writing this play is because his mother always used to chastise him about cleaning his room and telling him that if he's not careful, he's going to turn into a Collier brother. <laughs> so apparently back in the day, he's from New York, so okay. back in the day, that's, it made sense, it made okay. sense okay. yes. And you just told us a story, did you, you were telling us over there that you went to the, you, you went to where the house was yeah. mm -hmm. originally, and there's a park there now. Yeah. It's yeah, the, the house itself basically <laughs> rotted from the inside out, which was that just much junk. Yes. that much junk. There was over 40 tons of stuff when they found um, when they found um, Homer Collier dead, they went through 150 tons of junk. 150 tons, tons, tons of junk. Tons well, we're going to tell us the downstairs loop. That's true. Okay. <laughs> 14, um, pianos. Yeah. 14 pianos. 14 um, pianos. It was a four story mansion on Maybe. Fifth Avenue that was absolutely stuffed from floor to ceiling. Four stories, basement. And it literally rotted from the inside. So they, they had yeah, to pull did. the mansion down. And they turned it into a park. Um, At least they named it after them, so people will remember. That's right. There's no fine for littering there either. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, officer. Thank you. <laughs> well, it, it's really it is funny that nobody today seems to have heard about this story, but it was a huge, You're right. huge media sensation at the time. They had, you know, four-story mansion, eccentric millionaires that people only ever saw at night. And then one of them is found dead under 150 ton, tons of clutter. Uh, his brother, Langley Collier, this, this is the press stuff. <laughs> this is the, the press stuff. Wait, see, I avoided asking that question, who okay. did it? <laughs> that, that I won't tell you. But the other brother was missing. Okay, One brother dead, the other one has fled. Nobody knows where he was. This was a, a story of international proportion. Um, there were sightings all over the world, just like Elvis sightings, you know. He's in Peru, he's in Europe, he's in hiding <laughs> in Alabama, he's, you know, <laughs> wherever. <laughs> um, That's the first place I went, <laughs> Alabama. Um, Alabama happens to be my summer vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me, I 
Glenn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, but yeah. there were reported sightings all around the world. There were, were rewards being offered by all the major newspaper for any information as to his whereabouts. Um, it really was a very huge paparazzi type story. The war had just ended. They were looking for happy news to fill, well, not happy news, but <laughs> sensational news to fill the newspapers, and they built this into this frenzy. And it, it's interesting that, you know, it's only 70 years later, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's completely vanished from the public consciousness. So you're getting to see a show, and you're getting some education about something that, yeah. you know, a, a true story that happened. So. Um, so we'll get everybody great. to come down here. It's at the, it's great, at the Greenhouse Theater, 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 which is um, right around Lincoln Avenue. Avenue. Plenty of parking, easy parking. Lots of restaurants around the area, so come out and make a night of it. And be sure to see the show. We're really excited because you guys are really, really a fun group here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun show. It's a really fun show. I want, to thank, I want to thank you all for taking time out of your rehearsals because they're, they're here until 10 o'clock tonight. Yes, we appreciate it. We so, have plenty of time. Yeah. <laughs> we'd like to, we'd like to thank, thank, you thank you for, you for taking time. time. Yes, yes. Thank From Chicago Theater Review, I'm Frank and Gail, and we'll see you at the theater.